I'm here to talk to you this afternoon about managing the transition to postgraduate study. Um, my name's Sue Onans and I'm head of the learning support here at the university. I'm based at Three Elms Road, which is just off Pritchett's Road. Some of you might have passed the buildings as you're coming from tennis courts or Pritchett's Park. In the time that I've, I've got, I'm just going to give you some pointers uh, that uh, will hopefully be useful to you as students coming fresh to postgraduate study. I'm not going to be, be able to provide the answers, but just get you thinking about the transition from undergraduate study to postgraduate study and about things that useful resources, things that you need to think about. Um, I haven't got a great deal of slides, but I'll, I'll be you know, happy to take questions at the end. So, managing the transition. <coughs> so, you're going to find that it is going to be very much a roller coaster ride. You have only got a year to complete your master's degree. Some of you have come from backgrounds where you've done undergraduate degrees in three or four years. You've had time to get used to the environment. You've got, had time to uh, get to know your tutors, the referencing systems, and how to write for undergraduate study. A postgraduate st level study, you're almost running straight away. There is no kind of walking into it. So I'm just going to give you a few helpful tips about um, things that you need to consider uh, from that. So there are going to be lots of ups, there are going to be lots of downs, and, but hopefully the, the, the ride will be worthwhile. So I'm going to stay with the analogy of the roller coaster. So what about the ride? And the ride is the postgraduate um, journey. Now you might think that is informed by previous experience. Just looking round, there are people from different countries, some mature students. Some of you might have come straight from undergraduate to postgraduate. Some of you might have had a career break. Some of you might actually be working and coming back to study. And some of you might be balancing work and study. So yes, it is informed by what you've done before, but it's a completely different experience. And you can't just rely on what you've done uh, in, in your undergraduate degree uh, to inform the postgraduates because you don't have the time to do that. So yes, it is helpful if you have been in study recently, but you need to kind of put a different hat on really and think about postgraduate study, the difference in the referencing system, the expectations. So as I said to you before, you're going to have ups and you're going to have downs. And with the best will in the world, you're going to be working very, very hard in this year, and you're going to go through very stressful times because you're going to be pressurised by work, expectations, and particularly if you're trying to balance work, family commitments, and adjusting to a new uh, uh, culture as well. So there will be ups and downs. It is going to be like the roller coaster ride. Um, it's going to be very exciting, exhilarating, challenging. And I think I'd be questioning, if you weren't challenged by the master's programme, then I'd be worried. The, the idea is that you are challenged, that you are challenged to think differently. You're challenged to work in new ways. You're not a passive learner in the postgraduate um, uh, programmes that you're going on. I do appreciate that you're on different courses and the expectations are different depending on the courses, but the, the basic premise is the same. As I said to you before, it's stressful because, yes, you've read the literature in the um, prospectuses, the, you've had information from the course, but there's a lot of the unknown there in the postgraduate study, and that is quite frightening for, for people, thinking, what, what should I expect from my tutors? What, how much reading should I be doing? How much novel uh, thought should I be uh, investing? How much is uh, enough work to be doing? What, how am I going to be judged in this, this, this year? So, again, the unknown is, is, is quite a scary thing. But stress isn't always a bad thing. And you, you need to experience, you know, the kind of stressful situations in order to, to cope in the, in the future. So the unknown is daunting, but also it can be quite exciting and challenging as well. If we're looking at expectations... Again, that is totally different from undergraduate level, and it's particularly if you're coming from a different um, country, the expectation. What can I expect of a tutor, a supervisor, 
and what do they expect of me? And sometimes that is a bit unclear with postgraduate students. You think, actually, I don't know what they expect of me. Um, and it, it takes you time to get into the, the course and, and find out about expectations. But really, I know I don't want to scare you, but you haven't got time. You have to keep on, on going. So if you're uncle unclear about expectations, it's better to ask um, your tutors uh, rather than just kind of thinking, you know, um, what should I be doing? How should I be doing that? But there's a, a great emphasis in postgraduate study on independence. You are not going to get the support in the same way as an undergraduate. You're, you're now at a much higher level and the expectation is there. Um, so again, there's an expectation from the tutors and the, you, you're, you've got your expectations um, there. And like the roller coaster ride, you get on the roller coaster, you know, before you know it, you've got to the end. Time is so crucial, and planning your time is crucial for postgraduate study. Um, because before you realise it, it's over, so you haven't got the time to get used to um, the way around the library. And I know you've had a, a talk about the library, you know, and how to locate resources, because you're looking at different resources from undergraduate level. So it's really important that you've been offered all this um, support, resources, and it's no good waiting till a crisis occurs before you actually access that. So again, use the library, use the resources, um, and use each other. The greatest thing about uh, postgraduate is, is trying to build up networks with, with other people. And this is the kind of theme that has been um, established here before. So it's really crucial for that. So what is different? Now, you might all think, yes, I know what's different between an undergraduate and a studying at a master's level programme. As I've just emphasised, it's um, very short. It's a year. We're, we're two weeks in now. So you, the clock is, is ticking. Uh, so it's usually um, a year for postgraduate taught. There's an increased workload and intensity of study. There's a lot of expectation um, that in an undergraduate degree, you've got time to build up your assessments, your coursework, your skills base. Every assignment is crucial in uh, your postgraduate. You haven't got time to build up that skill level. Um, so you just need to make sure that you know where to access support, you understand the tasks, and uh, you know where to seek help. So, it's, so the, that's what I'm saying about high-stake assessment. You, haven't got, you, you can't test the waters, you've got to go straight in at um, postgraduate level. And then you'll notice the volume of reading has intensified as um, postgrads. You might only be in your initial stages, but it'll suddenly hit you, the reading that's expected. And the reading isn't always directed reading. You're, there's an expectation that you will read around the subject, you'll be not just looking at Google, that you'll be looking at things that are at the cutting edge of your field. And that's going to mark you out as, as different there. So the volume of reading. Then there's a perhaps a different teaching style from what you're used to. So there's less of an emphasis on formal lectures and there's an expectation in lectures that you can actually go away and fill in the gaps if you don't know the, the information. And that might be different uh, on different courses. Some might have larger lectures, but the trend t uh, tends to be in smaller focused uh, groups. And that, again, has... Um, an impact because you're expected to make a contribution. So when you're an undergraduate, sometimes you can disappear into the background and nobody actually sees you in a seminar and a discussion. At this level, you are expected to participate and contribute. And it's very difficult if you haven't done the preparation and the reading and thought about the subject area to actually do that. So it's, it's an expectation that you will actually be involved in this postgraduate journey that everybody's been talking about. So it moves more to um, tutorials, and that is increased preparation, participation, and personal contribution um, there. And all of this is uh, adding to the transferable skills that um, have been talked about before. So it's important that you get your points across, that you contribute um, to that. So people aren't going to be directing you in the same way. There's an expectation that you know what to, to do. Then the most crucial thing is the different working relationship with the tutor or supervisor and your peers and fellow tutors, uh, than tutors. 
Whereas an undergraduate, um, you know, you might have been lectured by a series of different lecturers and you might have been in big groups. As a postgraduate, you're going to have a much closer working relationship on the whole with your, your tutors. Saying that, they still are going to expect independence. So yes, they might know you by name, but you know, they're not there to spoon feed you through the, the process. And so that is quite hard to get the difference between the relationship between your tutor and um, yourselves. Also, when you come on to do the research element, which usually takes place in kind of June to September, that working relationship with the supervisor is key. And, you know, so that you need to actually work with the supervisor. Um, the supervisor is key in any postgraduate at any level, whether it's postgraduate taught or um, research, or if you're going on to a PhD. That relationship is crucial. Um, so you need to establish a good relationship with your supervisor, know the boundaries and the parameters of that relationship. Um, and I think this goes back to expectations, knowing what is a realistic expectation. Some students think that, um, you know, that if they've emailed a supervisor or a tutor, they should get an immediate response. Um, the uh, tutors, the supervisors are you know, very busy and they will get back to you, but it isn't an instant response. Uh, with, with that there. And you need to develop uh, networks with students. Students are your best allies for so sorting out um, you know, um, any difficulties that you might have. Um, and quite a lot of students set up buddy um, systems with uh, fellow students, um, again, to bounce ideas um, off um, each other. So the tutors are there as facilitators they're there to assist you to develop yourself not there to, to, to you know take you each step of the way there's a lot of independence and again there's higher expectations with a master's degree and I'm sure you've been told about this um, but the academic writing skills that might have got you through the undergraduate level go up a level they expect you to be writing at master's level the way that you get better at writing at master's levels is to read journal articles, to read the literature um, that has been published, to see the style, the academic style that is being used in the journals in your subject area. Then you need, there's an, an assumption that you know how to write for that particular discipline. Some of you might have come from an undergraduate degree that isn't uh, in the same discipline as your postgraduate degree. So there is that culture shift and that language shift um, if you're moving from disciplines. Also, if you've been to a different university from Birmingham, again, the switch from one institution, what's acceptable in one institution might be not acceptable in another institution. So you need to read your handbooks. You need to ask your course tutors what's expected in your particular discipline, because I don't know what's um, acceptable for each individual course. You will be expected to engage in critical thinking. It's, it's not just... Um, just reading information, it's actually thinking critically, and that is the, a very um, complex skill um, to achieve. And the key thing um, at master's level as well is avoiding plagiarism. Now, this is a major issue, and the reason I'm talking to you about this is because I'm involved in research on plagiarism, and I've just produced a paper about plagiarism, and lots of students are unaware about the rules about plagiarism and what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. So you need to check what is acceptable um, from your course, what is common knowledge and what isn't common knowledge because that varies from subject to subject. And you need to be sure that you understand the rules of plagiarism. If you're doing collaborative work, there's a, a fine line between collaboration um, um, and, and then um, you know, working and uh, taking other people's work. When you're working in groups, it's really, really important to know what you can submit as your own and what you submit as a group. So if your, your course involves um, group work there. And the whole issue of auto-plagiarism, you can actually plagiarise your own work. So again, it's knowing about auto-plagiarism um, as well. There is lots of resources on plagiarism, but ignorance is no excuse. You can't say, I didn't know, I didn't mean to. Intent doesn't come into it. You have to um, you know, uh, be aware of that, the plagiarism. Uh, also, for students, will often find that their work is submitted uh, through um, text matching software. 
So you the things like turn it in, copy catch. So you cannot cheat the system. And so it's really important that you know that you don't get caught out by not quoting about paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is a very, very difficult skill to achieve. Um, but if you're stuck on a plagiarism, you need to go online for the resources, ask your tutors, consult your handbook. So intent doesn't come into it. If you plagiarised, you've plagiarised. There is no um, excuse uh, for that. So that's really, really important, um, and particularly coming from a different culture. So think about the plagiarism. Then the next thing, you're also becoming an independent learner and an independent researcher. Because when you do your module on research and then you pr produce um, a dissertation or paper in September, um, you need the skills of being an independent researcher as well. So there's those two things together. And there's an awful lot to do in a year. So I'll just um, to give you some pointers there. Um, so postgraduates... A study takes you from a transitional journey from knowledge bearer to knowledge generator. That is really, really key. If you remember nothing else, that's um, really, really key there. And then just some resources, really. Um, so a successful researcher. This is a, uh, one very good book. Uh, it's mainly based in arts and humanities, but actually outlines how to conduct a research project in very um, simple uh, easy to recognise um, language. So if you're stuck about how to write a research project for um, an institution in this country, this is a really good book to, to, to look at there. It's one of many books, but just um, something that our students have um, used. So what do you need to consider now? So I've, I've, I've mentioned about the time frame. You have to be disciplined from day one. You need to be able to manage your time, your targets, you need to balance um, your work commission, um, commitments and your professional commitments. You need to maintain motivation. You're probably all very motivated now. But when the work comes in, the deadlines come in, the kind of pressure, it's dealing with procrastination. A lot of students at uh, postgraduate level are procrastinators. It's just because, again, there's the idea of the high stakes. So it's not unusual to, to be a procrastinator. Um, there. You need to develop a set of skills, and they're advanced skills. You cannot rely on your undergraduate skills. You need to be able to do uh, research, writing, presentation skills, and IT skills. And you need to develop strategies for effective study. You need to not work longer, you need to work smarter. And that's what students don't realise, how to work smarter. Um, it's about looking at ways and strategies um, for effective note-taking, effective reading, how to read effectively. It's not spending hours and hours in the library. It's thinking about what am I reading, what is the purpose? And there are materials online which will help you do that. So what you, all those skills that you had as an undergraduate do form a basis, but you need to develop those skills. So it's working smarter um, on that. Really. And then, what about um, the resources? These are some websites that um, I've found that have useful um, resources about academic writing at postgraduate, postgraduate level, that give lots of interactive exercises and things to try out. You also need to be thinking about, um, as somebody else said, about mind mapping tools. Is mind mapping going to be useful to you at your postgraduate study? Um, taking advantage of things like RefWorks or EndNote for doing your referencing. And from day one, the key message I would say to you is you have to be organised. If you're not an organised person, you're going to struggle. You've got to be organised from, from day one um, there. And then this is a very useful book, a Palgrave book, How to Manage Your Postgraduate Course. Again, very clearly written that is applicable to all students, but a very useful uh, resource um, there. And then if you uh, want any further support, because, as I say, you're going to have the ups and the downs, and that's to be expected. 
Um, so if you want support that you're kind of um, struggling with uh, procrastination, the workload is getting too much, it's no good waiting till a crisis point. You need to contact services um, as soon as possible so that we can help you think about strategies. So we have um, the well-being, um, which is the first one, the groups dealing with procrastination, uh, particularly for postgraduates. Um, so that's the time for, for that. And you register just by clicking on the, the course there. And then just with my other hat on, I'm responsible for um, students uh, with um, learning uh, difficulties. So any students with dyslexia, um, dysgraphia, dyspraxia. So if you haven't registered with our service, then we, um, I can see you afterwards. We're based at Three Elms Road. Also, if you have a disability, uh, we provide services for students with a whole range of disabilities. The service is confidential, so we don't pass on details without your permission. So you haven't got to be worried about thinking, will people judge me if I disclose? It's better to sort things out before they get to crisis point. I think that's, that's it. Thank you.